here with? G. David Howard. And j just coming over here to the casino, is this a, a first time for you? Are you a regular? No, or? I'm a, I played here when they initiated this club, when they first started it. I think that was in the first week. This is my second time back. But no, I'm not, I live on the East Coast, on the West Coast. Wet, wet West Coast, but you still come uh, over here to go and uh, do your show, though. Right. Hey, how long have you been doing this? Obviously, this is a new for you. And 36, stuff. Well over 36 years. So, from the time you started to till now, how, what what has been the biggest difference for you with the jokes? Do you have to kind of tailor it to uh, a certain crowd? Whether you got the crazy teens. The thing I've noticed the most is that when I first started, I was a little bit on the edge, a little edgy, and. Now time has kind of caught up with me with all the cable, TV. Now I'm kind of mild compared to what people have seen on, on television. When I first started, though, I had a reputation for being a little bit uh, over the edge. But uh, now I'm kind of just, just middle of the road, I'd say. So do you need kind of that spark plug to be over the edge again, or is that those days are behind? No, I'm enjoying what I'm doing now. Uh, I'm not ticking off as many people. <laughs> <laughs> I used to play. Uh, the Hilton on Clearwater Beach, I was there five years, and they lined up in the lobby trying to get in. And I used to yell out to the people, like, don't leave, I'll piss somebody off in a minute. <laughs> and, and sure enough, somebody would walk out before it would leave, before it come in. So, and, so is there a certain individual that you kind of look for in the crowd? You, you see that bozo wearing a certain style of clothing? That's the guy you're geared on? No, I, I try to, actually, if I were doing my normal show, which I can't do here because they I like to do a two or three hour show. It gives me time to talk to the entire audience. I get everybody's names, where they're from, where they're married, or second up, and second marriage, divorce, what happened. I dig into their personal life a lot and find stuff in there. So nobody's safe when you do no. it that, at that no. set. <laughs> so how are you able to differentiate when you're doing a shorter set like you are tonight? I just have to stick with material. Um, I won't be able to play with the audience much. Um, unless I really spot something that's Sticks out, I might, might have some fun with it. But I won't have the time to develop it because they want the show over so they can get back to the casino. So, I know that happened to me when I played in Vegas. They wouldn't let me do the long shows out there. They wanted them back to the games. So you need to make sure they're at the bar first so they get hammered enough so they can't get <laughs> up and get into the casino. No, I don't like them hammered because then they don't get the little subtleties. They don't get the nuances. But they, they laugh at everything anyways. Yeah, well, sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Now, most of the time they laugh pretty hard. So I, it, I hold the Guinness World Record. You know. Yeah, I, I overheard that. 16 hours? 16 hours nonstop without repeating and without a potty break. <laughs> How the hell did you manage doing something like that? I just mind over butter. Mind over butter. But how do, you, how do you keep the jokes that fresh? I mean, for that long, 16 hours? I mean, I have a bad habit of repeating a joke that I might have said an hour or two ago. Well, the media estimated I told 4,000 jokes Wow. in that time span. And I think I did about half my repertoire. So I, I think I know twice that many. So you're definitely spontaneous then if you can keep it going that long. Yeah. So it, it, between doing a 16 hour thing and an hour or half hour or whatever it is, I mean, you gotta definitely see a, a difference of I gotta adjustment. I got work at a different pace. I gotta work a little faster than I normally would work. Uh, Cause I kinda like to pace the stage and work a little laid back. Uh, and I know I'm doing a short time to show like this. I tend to pick, pick up the pace a little bit so I can get more material done. When, when you did a 16-hour uh, routine, where, where was that done at? Hilton, Clearwater Beach. Hilton, Clearwater And they didn't give you like a, a bucket to pee in or poop well, in while we, you were on stage? You know, we actually had a curtain that I could have gone behind. I had one of those little handheld uh, hospital urinals. <laughs> so I couldn't go back there if I needed to, but I didn't. Yeah, so that, that would have been kind of funny while you're peeing, you still got yeah, the yeah. mic and everything. Yeah, yeah. Would have been a, a little bit different of a type of routine doing something like that. Yeah, and I, I didn't have to do it. So, so who, who's the easiest one you think uh, as far as, I mean, saying that you usually play off of the crowd, is it easier to pick on like a teenager, a child, a senior citizen? Does it really matter? Or is it... Uh, seniors are the easiest. Why, why do you think that is? <laughs> it's because they've been around a lot and there's a lot of jokes for them, you know. Um, one of the jokes that I do is, is uh, I tell the audience I, I'm getting old too and I can tell them get old because when I get in the bathtub my balls float. And, and then I'll find some old guy in the audience saying, are your balls floating too? You know, and, I'm getting the thing. and then we'll go with that and start playing with that. 
Alright, 